Hello. This is the River Mersey at Liverpool. And if you travel along the river in that direction, you reach the sea. Have you ever been across the sea in a ship? Because that's what we're going to do today. We're going on a voyage along the river and across the sea. I'm not on board the ship yet, but I'm already afloat. This platform floats beside the ship to make it easy for us to get on board. The water's not always at the same level in the river here. It rises and falls up to about 10 metres during each day. This is what it was like at 4 o'clock yesterday. And this is what it is like now at 10 o'clock. Do you know why that happens? It's because the river flows into the sea and the level of the sea changes during the day as the tide goes in and out. That means the level of the river changes here as well. The platforms join to the shore by those gangways, which move up and down with the tide. So whatever level the water is, we can still get on board the ship easily. <laughs> This ship can hold up to 1,400 people and 90 cars. But once they're on board the ship, it's easier to carry them across the water than it would be to move the same weight over the land. In fact, it's so easy that more goods are carried by sea than by land and air put together. They're mostly carried in big ships like this one. This ship has brought a huge load of coffee and other goods from America. The goods are packed in containers, which are just like tin boxes. There are only two or three different sizes, so they're easy to stack and not much space is wasted. This ship is heading for a dock, which is a place where ships can tie up and unload their cargo. To get to the dock, the ship has to go through this narrow channel, which has gates at each side. On this side... Hello. We're just sorting out some musical instruments for our new song. It's about a very rich man who lived a long, long time ago. The Emperor of China. Now, the Emperor of China was very rich indeed. And one of the things he really liked to do was count up his money. The Emperor of China is very rich indeed. The Emperor has everything that an Emperor could need. Ask him about his gold coins, he'll count them for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there are so many gold coins that he never gets through. You could join in the counting while we play our instruments, like this. One, two, three, four. You count with us this time, just up to four. One, two, Three, four. Once more. This time, let's all count up to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now let's help the Emperor of China count up his gold coins. This time, up to ten. The Emperor of China is very rich indeed. The Emperor has everything that an Emperor could need. Ask him about his gold coins, he'll count them for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Our story today is about a boy who came from China. His name was Chen Ping. But he wasn't rich, though, like the Emperor of China. Chen Ping was a poor boy who had to work very hard indeed. <laughs> Chen Ping was a poor boy. He lived in China. He worked for a rich man. One day, his master said, Go to the forest and chop some wood. So Chen Ping took his axe and went to get some wood. He came to a bridge, a bridge over a river. As he walked across the bridge, he tripped. His axe fell into the river. He couldn't see his axe in the river, so he began to cry. Suddenly, he saw an old man with a long white beard. The old man said, What's the matter, Chen Ping? My axe has fallen into the river. I won't be able to chop any wood. My master will be angry with me. Don't cry. I'll get it for you, said the old man. And he jumped into the river. He held up an axe. Is this your axe? Chen Ping looked at the axe. It was made of silver. No. That's not my axe. The old man held up another axe. Is this your axe? Chen Ping looked at the axe. It was made of gold. No, that's not my axe. The old man held up another axe. Is this your axe? Chen Ping looked at the axe. It was made of iron. Yes, he said. That's my axe. You're an honest boy, Chen Ping. This axe will work hard for you. Then the old man disappeared. Chen Ping went into the forest. He began to chop some wood. Suddenly, the axe spoke. Chen Ping, sit down. I'll chop the wood for you. Chen Ping said, This is not my axe. This is a magic axe. The axe began to chop the wood. The axe worked hard for him. enough wood to take home. Chen Ping picked up the wood. He took it home to his master. He told his master about the old man with the long white beard. He told him about the axe made of gold. You are a stupid boy. You should have taken the axe made of gold. The next morning, Chen Ping's master said to himself, I'll go to the river. I'll find the old man. I'll get the axe made of gold. He took an old iron axe and he went to the river. As he walked across the bridge, he threw the old iron axe into the river. Then he sat down and pretended to cry. Suddenly, he saw the old man with the long white beard. The old man said, What's the matter? 
<laughs> My axe has fallen into the river. <laughs> I won't be able to chop any wood. <laughs> My master will be angry with me. Don't cry. I'll get it for you, said the old man. And he jumped into the river. He held up an axe. It was the old iron axe. Is this your axe? No, no, that's not my axe. The old man held up another axe. It was made of silver. Is this your axe? No, no, that's not my axe. The old man held up another axe. It was made of gold. Is this your axe? Yes, yes, Chen Ping's master said. That's my axe. My axe is made of gold. He snatched the axe. The old man disappeared. Chen Ping's master laughed. <laughs> now I'm a very rich man. I've got a gold axe. He ran across the bridge. As he ran, he tripped. And fell into the river. Chen Ping never saw his master again. So he took his magic axe and went home. His mother and father were very pleased to see him. And they were very pleased to see the magic axe. And I expect Chen Ping was very pleased to have the magic axe to help him with his work. <laughs>